there is a sentence in the Arthurian tarot guidebook that says that the goddess of the land is the true guardian of the hallows. And I think anybody that has worked with the Arthurian tarot for a while would see that that is strongly held within this deck, whose black archways invite you to step through into landscape, into the land, to meditate, to pathwork, and to find the messages held by the goddess of the land. Now, I am currently working through the five lessons that are part of the preparations for the Hallow Quest. The Hallow Quest being a year long course that starts on March the 21st that you find in the back of the big book for this deck. Lesson three is called the Goddess of the Land and it asks you to connect with your own spirit of place in your own locality and that's what I wanted to share today. So working with the spirit of the land or the goddess of the land it's a really lovely thing to do with tarot and I think you can do it with any tarot deck like here are the cards that I picked out that for me show the spirit of the place where I live the different aspects good and bad doing this connects you literally with a cord to your tarot deck via the landscape where you are and when your deck connects to you and your landscape it's connecting to all the clear energies there too then how about choosing cards that are for the healing energies that the place where you live needs these are my cards I chose for my country. But then within lesson three, we're asked to bring it closer to home. What about your immediate locality? For me, it's my garden. So how to connect with the spirit of the land in your locality or in your garden? For me, I went personal. I looked at three canvases painted by my kiddies when they were babies on a warm summer's day on the lawn under the tree. This one was Poppy's, I think she would have been about five. Tilly's, she would have been about six. Look, her canvas got ripped, but that makes me smile. Busby's is underneath, I think he would have been about two. And I looked at these paintings and was surprised with similarities. Look, there's green zigzaggy lines. There's red circles in them. There's also black and green circles featuring as well. Now, bear in mind, the kids all had different paints. Now this one was Busby's and this made me catch my breath because I've seen a similar vision of a spirit of the land here that had big blue hair, blue skin. Uh, in the vision, that figure sitting naked under the tree in the garden became me and red threads began to grow out of my feet to connect me into the soil and I realised that the soil here in the land and the garden was my grounding element, it was my roots in a world where I am very unrooted and with no immediate family. So my spirit of place, grounding, healing, calming, the green zigzags which I'm putting in here uh, which were in all of the children's drawings I think represent the up and down chaos that can sometimes happen and I wanted to put those black spots in because I see those black spots when I meditate all the trauma and unwanted things leaving me as black spots that disappear into the earth it's the earth every time but that colour blue as well, in my vision and in Busby's painting, that colour blue was really important. Blue calming like the ocean. Perhaps this is the ocean in Wales as well. Again, part of my own personal spirit of the land. The calming power of the ocean here and in Wales those red circles it was important that those went in in red i don't know why i was following my intuition here as i think you should if you wanted to have a go at doing this what does your spirit of the land look like i 
then felt like this circle here needed to be calm green like the lawn it isn't always chaos here and if i lean on the spirit of place it becomes much calmer those black spots being given to the earth we don't have to hold on to the things that we don't want and when i see the earth i often see white or yellow light so i wanted to put that in there as well the blue hair of the figure that i saw also mirrored in busby's painting goes in and there that yellow calming healing light and then i realized am i drawing an octopus that looks like one of my octopus drawings which just amazes me and then i look again and think no is that a protective eye i've drawn and i begin to get goosebumps and to feel quite emotional to be honest at the top of my drawing solid yellow because when i meditate that healing light from above also comes in and it is endless endless healing if you slow down calm yourself ground connect to the earth this is really beginning to feel like something not just a little doodle anymore this feels like it has significance as i draw those red threads that i saw in a vision growing out of my feet and connecting me to place And then I got a second-hand book and I flicked through to do some bibliomancy with it and I found some amazing words around the edge. I'm gluing the words and she began to sing with a voice, a sound of turning leaves and like an autumn wind, forests slowly slumbering, the tones of oncoming night and a promise of new days dawning. And then I added other words in like quiet and believe and dream flying and calm. <laughs> and I was going to put in the middle worship and wonder, but I felt really strongly to take the word worship out and replace it with belly. <laughs> I think this is a female spirit. On the back, I flicked to a little poem, which starts by the words, breathe in me deep that I might breathe and live and hold me close that I might sleep soft held by all you give. I love this little card that I've created for my spirit of my location and perhaps it might be something that you give a try to. It, it was a really lovely exercise for me those words i got to bibliomancy then i then used to create a closing affirmation for meditation to do with the deck it's part of lesson three and i'd really struggled to come up with words but the second that this card was done that affirmation wrote itself into a new day dawning i return from your belly of wonder grounded in truth into quiet, calm wonders, bringing love, security, wisdom, belief and new breath. Thank you for holding me close. But it's not just real place and landscapes that the Hallowquest takes you in. It's also an imaginary landscape to explore in your imagination and here you can see the center of that with my personal spirit of place card and the four aces these are the four hallows and you can see they are central to an imaginary landscape a tarot landscape using the entire deck now lesson three gives you the layout and that's what you're looking at now. This is the layout of the landscape of the Hallow Quest. This is the tarot landscape of the adventure to come. 
and it's been out on the floor now for a couple of days for me to meditate with and to just ponder over to see what catches my eye. You can see there are two cards off the boards and those are the first and the last of the majors because it's the seeker, you are the seeker about to step onto the landscape. The corners have the court, we have the court of the sword in this corner with the actual court cards themselves in the very corner, you can see them there. In the other corner we have the court of the spear. This would be ones in another deck and again the four court cards of that suit in the corners. In this bottom corner you have the court of the grail which would be cups in another tarot deck and then in this corner we have the court of stone or it would be discs or pentacles. You've got the majors going round in a circle. And those central hallows are protected by Merlin, by the Lady of the Lake, by Guinevere and of course by Arthur. It's been fascinating to set out this tarot landscape. I can't wait to do the lessons across the year to come that will have me exploring this in my mind. I wonder what I'll discover, why these cards are grouped as they are and why the hallows in the centre are so important and protected. I also wonder if this tarot landscape can be set out with other decks too. It will be interesting to find out as I travel through the Hallow Quest and also how will my own spirit of place play into all of this. I haven't even got to the start of the quest yet and I'm loving it already and I absolutely loved drawing this picture of my own spirit of the land where I live. I hope you find it interesting too. Perhaps you want to draw your own spirit of the land. Thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.